James? There you are. Hello! What's up, buddy? I said that like Mario. Hello! It's a me, a James! <laughs> James, what uh what color shirt and overall combination would your Mario Sona wear? Ooh. Uh black and red because I'd be Antifa Mario. Nice. Yeah. So just jumping on Nazis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean look, Bowser's a Nazi, all the Koopas are Nazis. Is that canon? It is now. Oh, okay. I mean, I think it's hard to go with that, you know, like spiky skull and crossbones look for your ensemble without coming off like a Nazi. Yeah, and I mean, he is, you know, he does, I think he's trying to exert a fascistic, a fascistic control of the, of the denizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. He is King Koopa, not President Koopa. Right, yeah, he was not de- democratically elected. Yeah. Now, are you thinking black shirt, red overalls, or red shirt, black overalls? Mm, I like black shirt, red overalls better. Because the overalls are, you know, they're, they're a working class article of clothing. You know, they, I think they're more representative of the proletariat. And so mm-hmm. I want those to be red to also express the, the uh, you know, the communist champion, championing that I hope to bring to the people. The mushroom people. Yes. Plus, Waluigi already has black overalls, so you don't want to step on him look. Right, 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 right. Wouldn't want that. Yeah, you didn't ask, but I think mine, um, I think for my overalls, I'm going to go with a nice, soft millennial pink. Mm, mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then for my shirt, uh, you know what? I think I want to do, is it within the bounds of the rules to do a pattern? I yeah sure I mean look Mario's got them like stars and stripes overalls he wears sometimes if you buy them in Super Mario Odyssey sure for America where he's from yeah (laughs) yeah yeah so I think I want to do I think I want to do a nice soft millennial pink overall and then for my shirt maybe a nice just nice big like pastel floral pattern Mm, mm -hmm. yeah that is nice and I don't think I'd jump on anybody's head I think I would just I think I would just ride Yoshis around and maybe sightsee all the beautiful sights of the Mushroom Kingdom. And when all those people are screaming, help us, please, we've been turned into boxes and bricks, and this is a very painful existence, you're just going to snap it and Instagram it? I'll look down on them and I'll say, no, like like Rorschach. (laughs) Like, like, Like the Rorschach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those toads have sinned and they know what they did. I'm a pastel, I'm a pastel, I'm a beautiful, peaceful pastel Mario boy but I am also incredibly judgmental and puritanical and I hate the sinful mushroom folks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, James, I heard you got approved for your apartment in New York city. We did. We got it. We grabbed it. We took it. It's ours. Now, are you guys going to be living in the statue of Liberty or empire state building? Mm, We, we did. We actually got the whole empire state building. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) <laughs> that doesn't yeah, sound it's, cheap well look it had been on the market it turns out no one wants to live there you know how like you know how new yorkers never fucking go to the statue of liberty or the empire state building because why would you yeah because they're so ungrateful for their own heritage they also don't want to live there so it had been on the market for uh two weeks which is in new york real t- estate time like 500 years right because a new york minute is is roughly you know, is several hours long. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, they really wanted to get rid of it, so we snatched it up. Yeah, I, I mean, it's also super duper haunted, right? Which is another reason that no one wants to live there. Yes, yes. There are countless ghosts of construction, like old 1930s construction workers who died while making it that haunt that place. It's really fun. I've never had ghosts that uh, recent before. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, ghosts that you can actually relate to. Yeah, and it is fun to, you know, instead of hearing like, I shall haunt this domain for eternity, it's more just like, hey, I live here too, deal with it. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm spooking here, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) James, how are you going to decorate every single one of, in excruciating detail, every single one of the Empire State Building's 102 floors? Yeah, I have concepts, so I'm just going to give you Mm -hmm. the one word concepts for each floor. Okay. Floor one dragons floor two skeletons floor three flowers floor four eggplant floor five skeletons again floor six (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, can, let's skip to floor 90 and then we'll finish it out. How many floors are there? There's 102 floors. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, time passes. Floor 90. Clocks. Mm. Floor 91. Symbolizing the time that's passed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, floor 91. The vape floor. Uh, floor You're going to be spending a lot of time up there, huh? Uh, floor 92, origami. Mm-hmm. Floor 93, uh, dogs. It's where the dogs live. Sure. Um, floor... <laughs> Let's stop. I'm good. I feel like I've said enough. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait to, uh, till you get settled in and I can finally visit your vertical dungeon of horrors and also some nice things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be cool. James, would you like to do a podcast? I would. Terrific. I would like to justify the time I spent watching this movie. So, yes, let's do one. Well, I've got good news for you. We're in one already. Welcome to Movie Improvy. <gasps> oh, hello. Hello. We're on floor. We're on the Movie Improvy floor of the Empire 87. State Building since 69. Oh, yep. It is 69. You're right. Yeah, 87 is, um, oh, it's guns, actually. Stay away from that floor. <laughs> I took all the guns and I put them there, and that's where they'll stay. Don't go there. Do not go into the gun floor. Yeah. Uh, This is your world's first and foremost film repair podcast. I'm your licensed and board-certified film repair technician, Film Strassman. And I am your executive film form, James Filmler. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. That checks out. (laughs) That's what your birth certificate says. Uh Uh-huh. I was just looking at it. Oh, really? (laughs) Why? I mean, yeah, I did. I did have to scan my birth certificate and send it to twelve different people to get this apartment. So yes. Oh, so you actually were looking at it. Yeah. Now that proves to them what that you were in fact born, because you are a golem. We did establish that, and it is canon. Yeah, I, I mean, there was still a the witch doctor who made me was is still technically a doctor who can write up birth certificates. So he did do me that favor. He did you that solid when he turned the liquid water into the ice that is your body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, that's our names. Um, do you want- <laughs> look, we got a lot of work to do this week uh, to fix this movie. And I'm doing air quotes with my fingers when I say movie that we watch. Uh huh. It's got movie right in the title, Phil. It has to be a movie. Yeah, I mean, according to the 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 F the F um, according to the FTC, it's false advertising if you put movie in your title and it's not a movie. Yeah. But man, boy, howdy, I, I really regret bitching so much about how incoherent Highlander 2 was because compared to this movie, that <laughs> yep. movie is, is, um, it makes sense. It's Jaws. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was trying to think of a movie that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Jaws. Let's get, that yeah, movie makes perfect good. sense. But yep. anyway, uh, let's warm up on some trailers and get ourselves all limber, loosey goosey, ready to tackle this nasty, this nasty movie. Yes. Now, James, I've got Apple trailers open here. Yeah. And there's one movie that's jumping out to me just right out of the gate, off of the bat. Okay. And it's called Goosebumps 2. <laughs> I was hoping you would pick that one. Now, I know that Go- I didn't watch it. I'm told that the first Goosebumps was inexplicably a quality film. Uh, it was it was good. Um, it, it It's definitely like a kid's movie in not the best way, but it didn't feel like crass or uh stupid to me i thought it was pretty good it was fine i and we do loathe crassness here uh yeah i mean (laughs) but i can't for the life of me imagine that the second goosebumps will be of the same pedigree yeah 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 shall we take a look i see a lot of gummy bears in uh in the movie poster which is interesting Mm -hmm. all right let's prepare to get spooked Man, who? Hold on, let me shake off. Let me let me shake off the k- bad case of the spookies that that one gave me. So, brrr, uh, I don't know yeah, where to start. It's a this medi- movie. 
It's a metatextual one, just like the first movie. It's not really an adaptation of the Goosebump book so much as it is about the books themselves coming to life and sort of vague representations of creatures therein uh, tormenting human children. So, like, in the first movie, R.L. Stein was a, a character in the film yeah. played by Jack Black. Mm. And, like, the main boy moves in next door to R.L. Stein and wants to date his daughter, but R.L. Stein has spooky secrets... And then at the end, it's a happy ending, and like R.L. Stein is less reclusive, and he let his daughter date the boy. But uh, w- uh, so now his house is abandoned. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes. His old house he it, moved. So is <laughs> so is his house set? So he moved, but accidentally left his super secret magic book that can make stuff come to life behind his hidden fireplace chamber. Yeah, I mean, he's probably, like, I bet a lot of scenes of this movie are are Jack Black in his new apartment, like, just kind of going through boxes and stuff, being like, did I, where did I, maybe it's in, did I put it in the one marked kitchen? Is there a, is there a fireplace box? Is there a box with fireplace written on it? I think I forgot to pack the contents of the fireplace. And I guess that, that explains why half this trailer was just clips of the first movie, because... The first half of this movie just takes place directly after the events, and it's just Jack Black packing up to move. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 mm. yep, yep. It does say on Wikipedia that the voice of the dummy is still Jack Black, like it was in the first film. I don't know if I believe that, because it didn't sound like him. <laughs> well, we only heard the dummy speak for mere moments. Look, James, all of this is trailer criticism. This isn't trailer fixicism. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I feel like the answer to fixing this trailer is fairly obvious, and I'm sure that you've reached the same conclusion that I have, so let's say it out loud at the same time. Okay. One. Three. Two. Two. Wow, we couldn't even get the numbers <laughs> right at the same time. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. We'll Haunted just Christmas. Adapt the, uh, the books. <laughs> oh. Yeah, exactly. We'll just adapt the books. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's so much good content here that, as the trailer told us, there's 62 books, so we could just make one of those. Haunted Mask. Like, no, I was thinking Chicken Chicken. Chicken Chicken's the one about a girl who turns into a chicken. It's got a chicken <laughs> on the cover. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Yep. I remember yeah. it. Just make Chicken Chicken. I just had to see that good, good cover. Yeah, it's kind of like an Animorph-style cover. Chicken with a little, little girl face. How about, uh, uh um... How to Eat Worms? What was that one called? Yeah. There was one about a kid with pet worms who attack him and try to murder him in his sleep. No, the boy ate worms, and also there's a huge giant worm under under him house. That's right. I just remember there's a passage in that book where he says that like the worms who don't... Oh, it's called Go Eat Worms. There's a passage in there about how he's looking at the worms in his worm farm, and even though they don't have eyes, they appear to be staring at him. And that gave me the heebie-jeebies, and I would like that. Just a bunch of worms staring at folks. Yeah, so maybe, I mean, maybe we can kind of do what this movie does here, because this movie's got werewolves and abominable snowmen and witches and dummies in it. But we can just mm-hmm. use all the garbage ones from the, and there's a big chicken and worms. <laughs> Yep. And, uh, you know, the superhero, the superhero guy, the mass mutant, maybe mm-hmm, mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. there. Maybe uh, the um, creeps. Who are the creeps now? They're like big purple dinosaur people. They're basically uh, that the David Icke secret reptilian society mm, mm-hmm. thing. There's big purple dinosaur people who disguise themselves as people. Maybe that big hamster from Monster Blood 2. Mm, yep, 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 yep. And um, and, we, and it's and it's called and it's called bad goosebumps. It's called it's called I've got it's called I've got it's called you've given me goosebumps and then in parentheses bad <laughs> goosebumps the bad ones. Yeah, and it's just a bunch of it's some kids and they walk past the chicken and it's got a girl's face and they're all just like <laughs> and then they move on with their lives. Not even that they're just like hmm huh <laughs> hmm. I'm not spooked, but I I am a little confused. I've got that kind of goosebumps that you get when you see a video of someone who hurts themselves, and you're you you're like, ugh, that would be bad if I got hurt. You've given me that kind of. <laughs> it's just a case of the the shiver nasties. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's more, what more, the movie's called. More Maybe gross it's called, bumps than goosebumps. Sh- yeah, it's just called shiver nasties. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it does star Jack White as F.L. Steen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, F.L. Steen's Shiver Nasties. Yeah. <laughs> This is the terrifying story of a little girl. Who, she goes to the store to buy milk, but the milk is um, green. It's green and it's real thick and it smells bad. Yeah. But it does taste delicious. It tastes really good. It's just eggnog, actually. This is the story of a boy who goes to, to visit his grandmother and she's got um, too many cats. This is a story about a blockbuster video employee who went into a coma in 1998 and just woke up and f- finds out that his job is gone. Also, is um, he's got a lot to do a lot of physical therapy because <laughs> his muscles have atrophied. His muscles are atrophied <laughs> real bad. <laughs> that's that's really the crux of it. His wife left him for the CEO of Netflix. Oh, damn it! Shiver nasties. <laughs> this is a story about a family who built they they build their house on top of an ancient um Martian burial ground. Yeah, but the Martians go through there, but they their 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 limbs are all out of proportion and yucky. They they keep trying to probe their butts, but they can't because they're ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> That's really uncomfortable for everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> uh shall we fix another trailer yes please is wonder park that's not the johnny knoxville movie is it uh, i think that was called action park or action point and it maybe action point i don't know what wonder park is i don't either oh click it it looks bad now we already did make a roller coaster mo- oh what is all of this now <laughs> yeah <laughs> unexpected see all right let's check it out so not once in that trailer did they call it wonder park no they called it wonderland the whole time (laughs) could they just not get the rights to wonderland for the title you think i don't know so it's a girl goes into the woods and gets on a very unsafe roller coaster and then is besieged by hogs and monkeys who want her to bring back to life the abandoned amusements park that she's discovered in the forest well Excuse me, my, my beautiful girlfriend delivered me a wonderful plate of couscous and shrimp while we were watching that. Uh, I'm sorry, don't you mean a Wonder Park plate of couscous and shrimp? I do. Um, so it seems to me like this movie is like a, um, <clears throat> like a never-ending story or like a, uh, like a page master of a situation. Uh-huh. Where the girl gets, you know, sucked into a fantastical land that may or may not actually be real. And at the end, she learns a valuable lesson, like, read books. But the vibe I got from this movie was that that lesson is like, nature blows. (laughs) Yeah, we need to kill all the evil nature that took over our good human creations. And just build a giant monument to capitalism. A theme park. Oh, yeah, little girl, you know, the woods are very boring. We're with you on that one. So please... Get on our unsafe mechanical rides and and come along to a place where the forest is gone now. Wouldn't it be wonderful? So cut to um cut to the future, right? It's uh it's it's a thousands of years from now, and it's life after people. All of mankind's you know fragile and egotistical creations have been have been withered to to dust by the timeless and unforgiving onslaught of nature, right? Like. All the cities are covered in vines and trees, and all the highways are highways for, but for deer now instead of cars. Yeah. And God damn it! You went to deer right before I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> and all of our big submarines are—they're like houses for, uh, for sharks. whales, for whale sharks. Whale <laughs> sharks use submarines like suits of armor for their nightly mm. battles. Mm. Yeah, the, the whale sharks built Iron Man suits out of our nuclear subs. But somewhere, somewhere, against all odds, a human child has awoken. They've been asleep for so, so long. And the talking, the talking anthropomorphized animals who are there, they find that child, and they take it under their wing, both literal and proverbial, and they give the child a flamethrower, and they say, Bring it all, burn it all fucking down. Get all this nasty green shit out of here and get, 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 you know, get your malls back. Burn it, burn it fucking down. Listen, nature is fucking terrifying. My mother was eaten yesterday by a pack of wolves, and, and then, I don't know that the same won't happen to me tonight. All of those wolves were then eaten by a whale shark wearing a submarine. 
Yeah, please. <laughs> The, the fucking, the, the hippo tribe last week, they got invaded by those whale sharks. And those whale sharks, th- there's no more hippos. They're gone. They're there gone now. Even, there hasn't even been a new iPhone since the 12th one. <laughs> my phone goes slow, so slow, none of my apps will update. I tried to use the calculator the other day and it couldn't tell me what two plus two was. I still don't know. Please tell me. It's solar powered. This is a solar powered calculator, but it's just got boobs stuck on the screen. I already know about <laughs> boobs. I don't care about them. I'm a, I'm a bear. Randy's has one one three four on it, and I don't even know. Oh, you flip it upside down. Okay, I see. I see. That's where we live. This calculator is telling us where we live, and it's hell. And I want you to <laughs> set it on fire. And this calcul this calculator is telling us what we all are for putting ourselves in this situation. And it's boobs. We were boobs. We all tried to make a new TV show out of ants the other day, but instead of like giving us a, an insight into the lives of the celebrities that you love, it just bit us and bit us and bit us. <laughs> and I think the main, uh, the main animal, the the monkey with the magic crayon or whatever from this trailer, is voiced by uh, Werner Herzog. Mm-hmm. Just ranting about the follies of man and and manimal. Yeah, man and manimal alike. The moment that the whale sharks built their first power suits, they surrendered everything that had once been noble or graceful about their species, and now they are just as cold and as dead inside as mankind had been before them. That was a very good Werner Herzog, and I don't want to know and you, but I don't think the whales built any power suits. I think the whale sharks just swam into a nasty old submarine and got (laughs) stuck there and then... Be- it became a cultural thing for them. No, I think they they built it with their tails. Kind of uh, kind of goes against the whole message of our movie, though, which is that the animals can't do technology and need the humans to come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, and this movie, James, is of course called "The Folly of Manimals." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's called "The Folly of Manimals." <laughs> Uh, all right. Do you feel good now? Can we um, can we tackle this uh, monstrous pile of a movie? I got it. I got my Werner Herzog impression in. So, yes, I'm happy. Oh, that's why we had to. Re- that's why we had to fix the third trailer. Yeah. Uh huh. I, <laughs> I just wanted to do Werner Herzog. Luckily, it came up organically in our discussion of this one. Um, James, do you want to sing me instead of telling people what movie we're doing this week? Why don't you just give them a little little taste of that iconic theme song that we all know and love and sing in our hearts daily. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Change into digital champions to save the digital world. That was a lot more of that song than I thought you were going to have ready. No, I know the whole thing, Phil. (laughs) Yeah, you used to watch a lot of this show when you were a stupid little kid. I did. I watched a shitload of Digimon. I think I've seen, I've definitely seen all of the first three seasons, which are about 50 episodes each. Uh, It's not very good, James. I have definitely seen this movie, and I definitely remember liking this movie. And man, who boy, was it not good. Incoherent. The, The premise of this movie is like, you know how people like Pokemon? You know how people like Pokemon? You get to explore a new land and capture all the creatures there and meet new people and fight them? What if instead kids just looked at one animal on a computer? Well, to be fair, Phil, it's a common misconception that Digimon ripped off Pokemon because Digimon actually ripped off Tamagotchi. Yeah, it's kind of a mix between Pokemons, Tamagotchis, and Neopets. Yeah. Now, I know that we need to fix this movie, but I do just want to lay out how this movie came to be and why it's such a mess. Yeah, no, give us that uh, give us that good old Digimon the movie rundown. So basically, I'll, I'll set the stage. Basically what had happened was the Pokemon movie had come out, I think, a year prior mm. and, and was a big success and lots of small children dragged their parents to see it and then their parents fell asleep in the theater and got, you know, just got a nice nap time in. Uh, and Fox, who owned the American rights to Digimon, was like, hey, Japan... Uh, can you, you got any Digimon movies you can give us? And Japan said, well, we've got these like 45 minute kind of standalone short films that like we handed over to a respected animator. Um, and they're, you know, they're, they kind of stand on their own. They're not super tied to like the canon of the series or anything. 
Um, maybe you could do like an anthology movie of those. And then Fox said, nah, we're just going to like chop those into bits until they're unrecognizable and Frankenstein's monster them together into a movie. And we're going to stall all that beautiful animation and just hold it on a freeze frame a bunch of times so that we can like add shitty narration and uh, make just the oh, just the worst jokes over and over again. Why would they say that? Why would they say all that to them? That sounds like they knew it was bad when they did it. <laughs> they did, Phil, but they wanted the money. Oh, the, their sin was once again avarice. Mm -hmm. Greed. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Uh, James, I got a lot of ideas here. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are in kind of the same vein. And then okay. they're, th I've replaced Digi or Mon with other, with other words or word pieces. <laughs> Is that what you did instead of watching this? I don't know how many of those you've got. None, in fact. All right, well, let me just, uh, let me fire off a few of these and see how they go. I'm going to give you, okay. mm, I'm going to give you my least favorite to most favorite of these. Okay. My least favorite one is also is kind of my least favorite because it rolls off the tongue the most worst. Can you give me my, the, the rolls off the tongue the most worst theme song? It rolls off the, your, it, the, doesn't tongue, it. It, it 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 rolls off the tongue the worst. That was really good. Can I give it a shot too? Yeah. Sometimes there's things that are hard to say and it falls out of your mouth in a difficult to control and inarticulate way. Give it, it rolls off the tongue worst. <laughs> yeah, yours was much better. <laughs> they were both good for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you softening the blow for me, but uh, but but yours was better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in this movie, the 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 internet makes everybody's microwaves go weird and like phones and stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, their computers are fried. Their microwaves are fried. Their phones are fried. Um, their rice cookers don't work good. Yep. Uh, so I was thinking, what if like instead of digital monsters destroying all the appliances. It was it was appliances who were destroying each other. So this idea is appliance, man. <laughs> Go toaster. Mm, the oh, bread can, is warm. You can you can do it. Wi-Fi enabled dryer. <laughs> oh man, I got touch screen fridge. Lame. Throw it back. <laughs> uh, that's pretty. I think that's all there is for that one. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Uh, so it's uh, just brave little toaster goes to a cockfight and 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 is in one. But as as whereas brave little toaster was sort of a, an allegory about the quest for independence and freedom and and kind of growing up and making your own way in the world. It's the mm -hmm. first half of it is that, but then he's captured by a horrible child and forced to fight to the death. <laughs> And he learns that childhood innocence is a lie and everything is horrible. My second favorite of these four ideas is Anamon Analog Monsters. <laughs> so just regular animals at that point? <laughs> no. No, I think they're still horrible monsters, but as opposed to being like computer creations in the digital world, they're more just like nasty, uh, don't hug me, I'm scared-esque crafty puppets. Ugh. And I think you anevolve or analog evolve them by just like sewing and hot gluing more shit to their bodies. <laughs> the di the digi vices are just hot glue guns. Yeah. yeah so in <laughs> so instead of so in Digimon, the Digimon came to be because uh, let me see if I remember this right. Fuck yeah, James, fill me in on that digi lore. So if I remember correctly, some scientists made a, a game for children. Mm. And they were like, hey, what if we what if we made like a Tamagotchi game, basically, and you have little digital pets and you're friends with them. And then one day they spontaneously gained sentience mm -hmm. uh, and became a whole deal. So it's that. But instead, it's just like a guy built a bunch of puppets in his warehouse and then they came to life for no reason. Yeah. And then he gave them to children. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's like, oh, children. Children, you're you're the you're the you're 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 the you're you're the chosen ones. You're the you're the Anna destined. Please take these puppets away from me. Please get them away from me. Please take these puppets. You you have to take the puppets. They're eating me out of house and home. Excuse me, small boy. 
<laughs> Don't be afraid. Come closer. I want you to take my big nasty egg. And it's just like a, it's just like a big like paper mache egg, like a hatchimal. Take the nasty egg. It's got a special treasure in it for you. Mmm. <laughs> his name's Sakuman. I made him out of my old socks and underpants. Covered in googly eyes. <laughs> Okay, so you're going with, like, this guy is just a fucking creep? Hey, little girl, come here. Opal, crack <laughs> I mean, he open makes puppets, the egg. so I guess he's probably a creep. Yeah, ain't nobody who make a puppet not a creep. Crack open my egg. Oh, it's your new special analog friend. Her name is... Dead Betty. Oh, she's like your favorite doll, but I killed her, but she's dead. Her name's Dead Betty. Her eyeballs got scratched out because I was feeling real mad about my mother. <laughs> But then the kids do just go off and, like, have a fun adventure. It's just, they always have to come back to this creepy-ass old man for... Upgrades. Not even old man. I think he's, like, 35. Yeah, it's like going to visit the fairy in, in Zelda, but instead you gotta go into, um, into Dwayne's garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found me the magic pine cones that I requested. You gotta go to the attic above Dwayne's mom's garage. Yeah. <laughs> Just go collect a bunch of pine cones in the woods and Dwayne will hot glue them onto your dead Betty. Now she's war dead Betty. Yeah. That would be more like forest dead Betty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now I'm, it's just, now I'm pine cone dead Betty. <laughs> uh, so that's Animon. Do you want to hear my favorite one? I do, please. My favorite one is Digimom Digital Mothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit mom got in facebook she's in it now oh dang all she's doing is fucking liking pictures of me when i was 13 with a bad haircut and sharing <laughs> posts from eagle.america.net about how hillary clinton is actually vince foster <laughs> Oh, mom got into Twitter and she's actually just finally banning all the Nazis. So that's nice. Oh, I got one of those good Digimoms. <laughs> yeah, she's I more love of a it. Digital mom narrator. Oh, mom got on YouTube and just started like a nice series where she walks through Michaels and talks about the decorations she likes. <laughs> Fuck. I would watch the shit out of that. I know, right? She doesn't buy anything. <laughs> Oh, look at this. Look at this. It looks just like a little Christmas tree. It's decorated already. <laughs> oh, it's little. Look at, look at, it's little piece of cut out pieces of balsa wood with paint. You can make your own three dimensional greeting cards. I love that. <laughs> oh, look at that wreath made of twigs. You know, that would be so nice to put out in the fall time. Eight out of 10. Oh, she ranks them too. Uh huh. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So those are all of my Digimon wordplay ideas. Do you want to fire off some of your uh, some of your Digimon repairs? Yeah, yeah. I didn't have any that were like that. Um, so we got we got a lot of variants to choose from. Can you can you give me the uh, give him your worst first theme? Because the the very first one I wrote down is by far my worst. Have you ever seen a baby being <laughs> born without a face? <laughs> and it's green and full of spiders, and you hate it so much. But it's your it's your first baby that you've had, so you can have another baby. And you tell the doctors to throw it in the garbage. You've given them your worst first. <laughs> Wow, that was better than this idea is gonna be. Um, <laughs> uh, so th the first chunk of this movie, the one that's a flashback with the big dinosaur and the parrot fight. Yeah, that was weird. Um, a egg randomly like comes out of a computer for no reason, and then a giant moon egg come out of the sky. Mm hmm. Yep. <laughs> what? What if? What? <laughs> what if? Uh, what if the Easter Bunny gave you eggs through your computer? Um, I don't know, James, what if that happened? <laughs> you were just kind of lobbing that to me and hoping I had something for it, huh? <laughs> I was. 
maybe like <laughs> maybe like the Easter Bunny. He's he's new to technology. He's like, oh, I can send kids their candy through the computer now with my magical Tron laser. Oh, cool! Thanks. It's a low res GIF of a Twix bar. I, I guess I <laughs> I guess I'll I'll not eat that. It tastes like. Hmm. It tastes like uh what it tastes like a representation of chocolate. It tastes like a fucking <laughs> AOL disc. <laughs> it tastes how AOL sounded. This digital bag of Skittles tastes like I just licked a fucking switch cartridge. <laughs> My mouth is in oh. hell, thank you. Oh, I think you need to run a newer operating system. Oh, maybe your webcam isn't high enough resolution. You need more gigabits. I think I need to field skin you and cook you into a pot pie, you rabbit piece of shit. <laughs> well, you can't catch me. I'm on the other end of a Skype call. Who knows where I am? <laughs> yeah, and then another kid shows up behind him and fucking field dresses him in front of everybody. <laughs> and it's the den. I've got another idea here. It's it's also on the um on the 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 weird egg spectrum along with your idea uh-huh this one's more of a horror movie but this movie's about a bunch of little kids who their computer has eggs and monsters come out of them and one kid they're like oh he had twins uh-huh and so i thought what if instead the kids just had the eggs uh uh so i hate it little little kids just start laying eggs and fucking monsters come out of them that talk to the kids <laughs> oh my god oh <laughs> uh, uh, i hate it uh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> I hate it oh man it's like a and the proportions are like a kiwi like they're laying eggs that are like a third their size and it's just like mommy mommy something hurt oh, and just a huge egg just comes out and then oh man and the Digimon designs are so fucking ugly and weird looking like the, the internet monster in its first stage when he's just got those weird gangly arms and that big wide head. It's just those mm-hmm. nasty fuckers hatching out of these eggs. Ugh. Yes, that's a horrible image you've put in my head. They look like Ugh. eraser head babies and shit. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh, God. Yes, very good. Very spooky image I have in my head now of children laying giant eggs. Sorry, Timmy. I guess you got to drop out of school and raise your monster. <laughs> You have to take responsibility now, Timmy. Should have thought about that before you fucked that weird big bird. I didn't! Well, who laid (laughs) the egg, Timmy? You should have thought of that before you stuck your dick in the floppy drive, Timmy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I have a... It's essentially the same idea you had, just not a horror movie. Just frame it as E.T. It's called My Pet Kaiju. Hmm... It's just a nice story about a boy who finds it like a tiny pink puffball monster, and then it grows into a, a giant fucking dinosaur with nuclear fire breath. Aw. But they're still friends. Kind of like Clifford the Big Red Dog, I guess. I never thought about it in this context until now, but Clifford the Big Red Dog's sort of a kaiju. He basically is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of a canine Jew. Yeah, just a very, very cute one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so the, the kids, like, ride along on the backs of their kaijus and fight them. Phil, it doesn't matter now because now we're going to make Clifford king of the monsters. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> because that's better than that. You, you've, you've twisted in a better idea out of what I had. You took my idea towel and you ringed mm. out just the golden sweat beads. That's really gross. That metaphor got away from me, but still, my new idea is Clifford king of the monsters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh, he goes to Monster Island, um, just sw- dog paddles there, just swims over to Monster Island. Because I think, I think what happens is uh, Clifford's owner is having a real hard time controlling Clifford and getting all his energy out. Yeah. So Clifford's owner builds a giant mech suit and rips a huge tree out of the ground and throws it like a stick. But he throws it too far. <laughs> all the way out across the Pacific Ocean, Clifford dog paddles over there and finds it. And the, the tree stick lands on Monster Island, conks Godzilla right on the head. Godzilla's mad as all heck. So he attacks mm-hmm. Clifford. Clifford's a dog. He doesn't want to fight, but he thinks it's a fun game, so he defends himself and beats the fucking piss out of Godzilla's pants. And um, <laughs> yeah. It's the second time in two episodes you've used that expression. <laughs> it's a real expression. <laughs> um. And then he, you know, as is monster law, he takes the crown and becomes king of the monsters. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, I just, I have another kaiju idea. Um, it's called, uh, I don't remember what, oh, it's because in the first part, they've got the little pink puffball monster, and the, the, the boy complains that the little pink blob is kissing his face too much. Yeah, that was weird. Um, so my idea was uh, for a kaiju who, um, it doesn't fight with uh, atomic fire breath, it fights with its smooches. It's called Kiss Kaiju, the kaiju that blows up monsters with its monster smooches. So when it kisses a monster, does the monster explode? Yeah, but not out of, but like they're happy about it. Mm-hmm. Like th- they get the kiss and they're like, oh, so much love. Yeah. Is it Bugs Buddy dressed like a lady? <laughs> but 50 stories tall? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I had a really similar idea here because mine is um is is really similar. It's but it's more like Pokemon related than Kaiju related because you know uh-huh. I don't know how I don't know what you do with the digital monster, but I do know what you do with Pocket Monster, which is you fight it against other Pocket Monsters. Mm-hmm. So what if instead though they what if instead of fighting each other they romanced each other? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how do you? And then that's mm. how you get new ones. Oh, so that's just breeding then. Yeah, they fuck each other, and then you get like, oh, he's having ba- it's a um, oh, it's a little, it's a picasaur. So they do. I mean, Pokemon breeding is a thing. It's but it's never really explored in depth in the you don't series or the games. Oh no, you do. In the games, you can put a fucking if you put anything in with a ditto, it'll fuck the ditto, and something will come out. Okay, but you can't be like, I want Mister Mime to get busy with this Metapod. And see what yeah, sort of nasty clown cocoon comes out. <laughs> do so. What do the I, Pokemon's fight? What do the Digimon's do? What is Digimon even based on? Digimon is so in Pokemon, like you just you know, it's you catch the Pokemon, you fight them. There's there's not. It's just kind of a fun thing that kids do. Mm-hmm. In Digimon, the children are the Digi destined, and they get sucked into the digital world because they're the ones who are chosen to have a special bond with their Digimon and fight the big, nasty, evil Digimon who are trying to take it over. Uh huh. But what is, but what is like the game Digimon? What do you do? Oh well, I don't think there was one. Digimon didn't start as a game. It started as a to- like a literal toy, like a Tamagotchi knockoff toy called Digimon, and then they made and a you show. You said to keep it. it alive. I think so. Weird. Yeah. Maybe that's a maybe that's a movie. It's like a uh like a it's like The Road, but instead of a father <laughs> trying to protect his son from the the evils that humanity has succumbed to after the apocalypse happens, it's a boy trying to keep his little nasty digital dinosaur friend alive in the faces <laughs> of, you know, human want and and lust and depravity. Oh, that's kind of sweet. <laughs> yeah. And then at the end the batteries run out and he is full of despair. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh and then you roll credits. Yep. Silent credits. I got an idea here. So in this movie, so in again, I'm just going back to Pokemon because that's my closest reference point. Pokemon when a Pokemon evolves, that's just it. It's now it's a new different Pokemon. Uh-huh. In this movie, when the when a digital monster digivolves, yep. it turns into a different kind of monster, but it seems like there's a sort of like a branching path and it can evolve into different sorts of forms and evolve into different levels, but then also back down to its previous form. Yeah, digivolving is a lot more like um going Super Saiyan and Dragon Ball Z. Like you can do it and then, you know, later you get stronger and you can go to higher levels of it. But eventually you do get tired and you go back down to your base form. So I was wondering what if people could do that, but backwards up and down the evolutionary tree. (laughs) So, okay. But it is the same principle where, like, you can only sustain the higher levels for so long and then you get tired. So, like, you go out and you run a marathon or something, then you're tired and oops, I'm a lemur now. Yeah, like, uh, but I was thinking almost the opposite, like, oh, how are we going to stop the uh, the how are we gonna stop the aquatic bad guy from we're all trapped here on the shore like oh now i'm gonna be tectolic crawl back into the ocean mm, okay how are we gonna get into the computer server it's in a locked room hey hold up check me out i'm an amoeba hey hold up check me out i went forward to a point when uh we as beings no longer have physical bodies and i'm just gonna phase into the data of the computer and change it yeah, and my consciousness has merged with all other consciousnesses in the universe now that I'm post-singularity and I've achieved nirvana and I've achieved a, a, a sort of like a death of ego and a oneness 
and a peace that I've never experienced in my life. And oops, now I'm too tired. Now I'm just a regular shitty person again. But I'll never forget what that felt like. God damn it. Oh, God fucking oh God. damn it. Oh, God, why are my fingers? Why are my fingers? Why are they? Ah! <laughs> a lot of existential horror we're bringing into this episode. That's our bread and butter, baby. I mean, that is what I felt watching this movie. I just stared straight ahead and thought about the endless passage of time and how we're all going to die someday. Yeah, I definitely was making a mental list of all the other things I could be doing with my time. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Uh, I got an idea here. Um, so there's a, a point in this movie when the, the bad computer virus monster is just like eating all the data. Like that's what mm-hmm. they keep saying. He's just, he's just eating it. Yeah. He's just eating it and he need he's just eating it and he needs more. And at one point mm-hmm. the, the boy, the, the boy with the goggles, I'm acting like I don't know his name because this movie is stupid, but I absolutely do. His name is Ty. Ty is like, uh, well, what, what should we do? Order him a pizza? And I thought, what, like, what if you did, though? What if that's the solution? Like, what if it's a monster movie and the monster's just real hungry and you just got to feed him a pizza? And then what happens? Nothing, that's it. I think it's just a monster movie and everybody's really scared. And then at the end, they learn that the monster just wanted a pizza and then they chill. No, but I'm saying, like, you know, follow it to its natural conclusion, James. Follow the thought all the way through. The monster's not going to be sated forever. What about the next time it wants a pizza? Oh. Who's responsible? Are we going to teach him to order pizza? Will it go back from whence it came? How did it know about pizza to begin with? Or have we just taught it about pizza? And now that's all it wants, ever. <laughs> oh, but now it ate too much pizza. It's got diabetes, and he blames you. Now it's 500 years in the future, and the monster just kind of lives like a queen ant. It never moves, and it is gluttonous, and it is large, but it could still destroy us all. And our entire society is now just centered around baking pizzas for this monster that's what the entire economy is everyone's job is somehow pizza related you're either like you're either a dough kneader or a sauce spreader or you're harvesting the grain or you're milking the cows for the cheese you know what i mean the forests have long ago been um been been carved off of the face of the earth because the monster's got a real hard on for wood fire pizza yeah (laughs) when we ran out of trees we started burning each other and as uh, and, you know, pigs and cows all went extinct for pepperones. So guess what you got to make those out of now? <laughs> Babies. Yep. It's folks. It's, it's people. The pepperoni <laughs> is people. The clone farms take up most of what was once Canada. Just people grown in bags, never see the sun. And then we grind them up and Italian spice them and we throw them on that pie. My daddy was a basil farmer. My granddaddy was a basil farmer, and his granddaddy before him was a basil farmer. Basil farming's all I know, and God damn it, boy, you are going to stay here and work this basil farm after I'm dead. <laughs> it's almost nice, in a way, to know that what you do serves a purpose, that what I, though what I do may seem small and insignificant at first blush is, in fact, a small step in keeping humanity alive on this planet and keeping our existence from being snuffed out. By a cold, cold monster who just wants pizza. And the movie is called, um, the movie is called Dominionos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going to call it The Hungry Howie, but yeah, that's good too. Oh, fuck, that's so much better, but regionally specific, but also much better. <laughs> Um, I don't have any more ideas, James. Do you have anything else? Uh, I have one. Mm. So in this movie, the the three children, I want to make it known that there are, there are seven main characters in Digimon, and in this movie, like, five of them do fuck all. And yeah, and only two of them are ever in a room together. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Um, so when three or four of the kids who are supposed to save the world are saving the world... Everyone else just, like, is watching it on their computer screens, presumably because they don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, You know, presumably the virus got in there, and, like, they just have to watch what the virus is doing now. And I have to imagine that for most of those people, their experience watching that was a little bit what I imagine your experience was like watching this, where they were just like, what the fuck is happening? What, what, What am I looking at? Why is there so much scaffolding in the internet? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, because the website was under construction. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, um. So I thought, you know. <laughs> so I thought, you know, what if like it's like the Aveng- It's like the first Avengers movie or something. You know, there's a big like citywide battle or her or big event going on that's wreaking all kinds of the destruction but it's from the perspective of a guy because everyone in the avengers like knows who the avengers are and like gets the Mm -hmm. stuff they do and like people stop on the street to snap pics with thor and shit but so this is a movie from the perspective of just like a, a a a guy who does not keep up with with the the modern times and just has no fucking clue who any of these people are or why any of this is happening yeah, so it's kind of like a Cloverfield, but of of super beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like the heroes would be would have to be super esoteric, right? Like because anybody can look up at a, if a, a strong person in a cape is punching a, a robot, you can parse what's going on, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if all of a sudden there's an old lady on the street beside you and her face falls off and a bunch of frogs start jumping out of her head and then out of a window in a building high above you flinches you hear the grass the glass crash and um a bunch of hyenas jump onto the ground and they all start stomping on all of the frogs and all the people around you are cheering and calling them names that you can't understand in a language that you've never heard before (laughs) yeah it's basically like there's an um, there's a tourist somewhere and like that somewhere's local heroes have come out and he's just lost. Yeah, but again, I don't want it to be parsable by anyone like legible to anyone <laughs> who understands what a superhero is either. Right. I want right, it to right, be right. just like just absurd Dadaist nonsense. Like you're walking <laughs> through an art museum and all of a sudden one of the paintings comes to life, but it's an abstract painting and comes to life as a relative term because it's moving and operating within three dimensional space, but you can't. You can't, your eyes can't comprehend any of the forms that exist there. And then a guy in a bank robber costume holding bags with money signs on him runs into the bank and unturns the bags and empties them out. But they never stop emptying, keeps pouring and pouring and pouring. (laughs) But what's pouring out of them is green sludge. And then the sludge just embraces all of the other people in the museum and they're clapping. They just keep clapping. They're so happy as the sludge (laughs) swells up over their bodies and fills their eyes and mouths. I think this movie broke us. <laughs> <laughs> this is by far the weirdest fucking episode of this podcast we've ever made. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this movie has caused us to 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 search for meaning in places where there just simply isn't any and it has broken us. That movie, that movie I just described is called Uncle Daryl's Ukulele Problem. <laughs> oh, man. <Whew. clears throat> hey, James, what movie should we make? Yeah, let's make one. Which one we... What fucking existentialist nightmare of a movie are we going to make, Phil? I'm not gonna lie, I got a soft spot in my heart for Animon analog <laughs> monsters. I do also really like Digimoms. <laughs> Digimoms. Digimoms. Digital is mothers. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if anything else we said was coherent enough to be an actual movie idea. I'm I'm not against uh uh the Dadaist superhero movie. Yeah, that one feels exhausting to me, honestly. <laughs> I can't come up with too much more shit like that. <laughs> Let's do Animon. Let, let's yeah. do a movie about a group of children and the creepy puppet maker that they're friends with. Or not even that they're friends with, just who made their friends. I like Animon analog monsters. I like the idea that the, that, they're, um, that they can just upgrade their monsters with whatever old trash they find lying around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I made all these puppets and then I stuffed them full of hot dog meat and they came alive. I didn't know, but the hot dog meat was it came from a cow who was a wizard. <laughs> Ground up that wizard meat into frankfurters, and it was imbued <laughs> with magical energies. I tried eating one of them, and it was filled with glitter. It was real gross. Got glitter in my gums. Glitter in my gums. <laughs> glitter in my gums. Okay, can I leave? <laughs>
can I leave? This is weird, and I'm a kid. I have better things to do. Um, so what's our plot? I mean, I feel like it could be pretty straightforward. Child gets a magic friend. Children who mm -hmm. all have received magic friends find out and team up together. Yeah. Find out that there's a big evil sort of of the same in the same vein as the magic friends. You have to upgrade your magic friends and believe of the, in them enough to defeat the big evil. Yeah. So if our if our magic friends are analog monsters, aka nasty, nasty puppets. Yep. What's our big evil? What's the equivalent of like the big parrot who flies out of the sky at the beginning of Digimon? Well, so I think the twist ending is that the the creepy guy who made all these puppets for these kids also is making all the monsters that they're fighting. And at the mm -hmm. end, he just goes buck wild and just cleans out the craft store of felt and hot glue and uh, cleans out, you know, the butcher shop of all its meats to fill it with. Yeah. And he just makes the biggest, nastiest monster. Uh, and the and the kids and he's like, ah, see, I wanted to be the analog destined all along, and now that I have the strongest animon, I'm gonna be the hero. I think his final act is he feeds himself feet first into a huge meat grinder, and then allows his meat to sort of drip drop into the chest cavity of his big monster, <laughs> so that his soul can be part of the creation and guide it from beyond. Yeah, and I do think that the whole movie, this is very on brand for us, I do think that the whole movie, there is one kid who's like, this guy's a fucking creep. Um, I, You know, it's weird that he gave us these monsters and then we're suddenly there's a bunch of monsters just like them that we have to fight, and I think it's him. And all the other kids are like, what, Dwayne? No, Dwayne's our nice, kind mentor. He gave us our friends. He's going to help us on our adventures. Dwayne introduced me to my best friend, Pinecone Toilet Paper Man. <laughs> Pinecone, he hugs Pinecone Toilet Paper Man. Pinecone Toilet Paper Man is just like, <sighs> I, I said Pinecone Toilet Paper Man, but oh, <laughs> Pinecone Toilet Paper Man is funnier because now it makes me feel like he's just man shaped. <laughs> yeah, roughly, roughly man shaped. He's like that baby teeth creature from uh, Channel Zero. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the villains too. Is just made out of baby teeth. Oh God! It's just a doll hey, with I baby teeth inserted that into Those it. Those are my baby teeth. <laughs> oh God! Ugh. Where did you get those? Are you the tooth fairy, Dwayne? I've yes. been watching you kids for a long time. You were chosen all by me. Part of my plan. Ugh! I really hate Dwayne. I really hate what we've made Dwayne. I hate him. I'm going to have nightmares about him tonight. In order to defeat the final villain, mm -hmm. the, the, the ground beef stuffed <laughs> uh, giant monster, probably made out of like old car parts and paper mache, mm -hmm. I think that the kids have to use their, their Animon device. I don't remember what you called it. It would be, just be Anavice. The Anavice. The glue gun. Do they have to like <laughs> Voltron style attacks attach all of their animons together into one sort of big heaving Cronenbergian blob <laughs> yeah. pile? Just like they do in this movie, except instead of being like a sleek, cool robot looking thing, it's just a heaving mass of gross, soggy felt. Yeah, it's like an asymmetrical Katamari Damasi. Ugh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> cool. I feel pretty good about this it's one of our more straightforward plots but i feel like it's a children's movie right you know it should be yep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think it's gross and nasty enough that no one's gonna care they're just gonna be horrified by what they're seeing <laughs> now let's cast this i want to keep it simple so let's have let's say let's have three kids okay plus their monsters voices mm -hmm. Dwayne. yeah and then the voice of the final beast. Yeah, Monster Dwayne. Monster Dwayne. I will say, I, I think we can randomize everything except Dwayne. I think d the character we've created for Dwayne is pretty specific, and I think we got to think about it for a minute. Uh, I don't have to think about it at all. It's Clint Howard. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> it is Clint Howard. <laughs> it's obviously Clint Howard. Uh, our children should be children, correct? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's let's cast children for the children and randomize the digital monsters or the analog monsters rather. Haven't we we've didn't we select random children at some point before? 
Yes, we used the IMDb Top 60 Up and Coming Child and Teen Actors 2018 list. All right, let's get after it. Uh, now, James, you know the digital monster television show better than me. Do you want to give me three kind of loose character archetypes that we can cast into? Okay, so you need uh, you need the idiot hero who's like leader by default. Like he's never officially the leader, but but he is the leader. Uh, and he's kind of just headstrong and brash and like a little bit annoying and kind of dumb. But his heart is in the right place. Uh, and then you have, of course, the uh, the Lancer. You know, in, in Digimon, that would be Matt, uh, kind of mm-hmm. the, the, the cooler, more aloof one who's always like, oh, uh, leader fucking stupid. He doesn't know shit. I should be leader. But then like leader pulls out all the stops and, and, and comes through for the team. And they're like, OK, leader should be the leader. Uh, and then you need just like the goofy, nice one who whenever the leader and the cool one fight are, is just like, oh, g- oh g- gee golly shucks, guys, can't we just be friends? OK, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Probably not, you know, super good in battle, but like is always there for moral support. All right. So I've found the worst baby name generator ever. Good. All right. First, let's cast our first kid. I'm, I'm using a hundred sided die, so there's only uh, 60 kids here, so I'm just going to have to roll until... I have an issue with this list, actually. Okay. Almost every single one of these kids white. Yeah, it's a lot of them. There's a lot of white kids on this list. I'm going to I'm gonna randomize this, but I'm going to say there's a no white boy roll. Okay. I'm going to 86 just... all the white boys off of this list. All right. I'm good with that. All right. Our leader is Ruby Barnhill. From the BFG. Oh, okay. All right. And Ruby's going to be playing a character named. Try. I swear to God, I'm going to find a good one. All right. This kid's name is Krish. Krish? Yeah, it's Krish. <laughs> I like that. Hi, I'm Krish, and this is this is my best friend. Dead Betty. This is my best friend, Dead Betty. <laughs> Whoa, bram blam, Dead Betty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris is the leader. This is Chris's Lancer. Going to be Tyree Brown from Parenthood and Frozen. Frozen? From Frozen. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, Tyree Brown's going to be playing a Lancer named Nixon. Ooh. (laughs) That's very, like, almost cool. But with a CK, not with an X. Ooh, okay. Nope, that takes its cool points down. But yeah, it's (laughs) it's Nixon. I'm Nixon, and this is my best friend, Cat Fur Balsa Boy. <laughs> All right, last but not least, our just a nice one wants everybody to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Portrayed by the actor McKenna Grace from Gifted and Designated Survivor. Okay, okay. Playing the character, Tam. <laughs> it's very good. Hey, guys, I'm Tam. Can't we be friends? And her best friend is, of course, the Animon. Just a pile of sticks. Just a pile of sticks. But it, later on, they they get upgraded to light bulbs just a pile of sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and evolve to light bulbs just a pile of sticks. Oh, <laughs> broken. Oh, we, broken. Just, we just wrapped a bunch of Christmas lights around them sticks, huh? Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and cast our, uh, our Animons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Our, our voice actors. So, Dead Betty? Yep, Bam Blam. <laughs> From the movie Rampage. Oh, my God, I never remember how to pronounce his name. Joe Manganello. Is that how you say it? Manganello. Yeah, Dead Betty's going to be Joe Manganello. Hell, yeah. Hey, Joe, you might not end up being Deathstroke, but you, you can be Dead Betty. Yeah, you can be, you can, um, you can be Dead Betty Stroke. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't see that but phil shook his head at his own joke and it was funny <laughs> really disappointed in myself uh okay cat hair balsa wood <laughs> was it cat hair balsa wood boy cat hair balsa wood boy for the movie ready player one is simon Pegg. mark rylance ah uh, okay was really hoping for Simon Pegg, but... Well, Mark Rylance is widely regarded as the greatest stage actor of his generation. Mm. James? Yeah, Mark Rylance... So, so uh, Cat Hair Balsa Wood Boy will be, like, really respectable, but also a little boring. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Finally, the wild card. Just, just a pile, pile of sticks. Of sticks. <laughs> From the movie Sherlock Gnomes. Ugh. Johnny Depp veto in effect. Is Michael Caine. Hell yes. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, right, and finally the voice. Yep. Analog Dwayne is Judy Greer. (laughs) That's fucking great. Judy Greer is amazing. From the movie Halloween, Judy is going to be Judy Greer. Fuck yes. So congratulations, Judy. You're a big pile of trash. But fuck yeah, Judy Greer. Big old (laughs) pile of meat and garbage, Judy Greer. (laughs) Put that on your resume. That is the monster's name, too, is Big Old Pile of Meat and Garbage. Yeah. But it's written kind of like a like a Garbage Pail Kids card where, like, each of those words is capitalized and there's lots of apostrophes. Yeah, for sure. It's clear that it is a proper name. Yeah. So that's our movie. What are we it's calling Animon. this mess? It's Analog Animon. Monsters. <laughs> um, Animon, Analog Monsters, they're all full of hot dog meat. <laughs> Thank you, James. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening to this. Uh, hey, you know, like, 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 and subscribe. <laughs> if you want to hear more of this nonsense, uh, subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> Tell people about the podcast. Use your words to. I would be thrilled to hear you try to describe what has happened over the last hour or so to to, to your friends and loved ones. I would pay for the privilege of hearing that. Uh, We're sorry uh, that we're like this. Tell your friends about the podcast, but also come tell me about the podcast. Explain it to me me because I'm curious. Um, We've We've really lost the thread this time. Yeah, it's getting weird out there. Uh, thank you to Cusick for the use of your song, Dragonfly. If you don't want us to use your song anymore after this episode, I understand. <laughs> um, uh. You can follow me on Twitter at Phil Stressman. You can follow James on Twitter at Doc Professor Man. Movie Improvies on Twitter at Movie Improvy. Uh, we're on Instagram at movie underscore and um, um, movie underscore improvy. And you can send us your thoughts and feelings and interpretations of the show at uh, movieimprovy at gmail.com. I'd be curious to see that as well. <laughs> Please just give us a plot description we can use because um, we, we can't think of one. Nah, it's real strange. But you know what? No matter what, James, each day is a new day. Each dawn is a new opportunity. And... Uh, even though you may have stumbled and fallen in your efforts, you know, come on, step it up. <laughs> no matter how, you know, no matter how bad it seems like it's getting, you just got to repeat that mantra to yourself and do better. And come on, step it up. Come on, step it up. Come on, step it up. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>